You are listening to Unfuck Your Mind with the real, raw, colorful, authentic, empowering, control profanity loving human Zach Laotis, soul activator, master key holder, and intergalactic elder. Zach loves to find lessons in adversity to advocate humanity one listener at a time. She also enjoys having fun along the way. Check her out at ZachLaotis.com to see what she's up to. But for now, let's pass it off to Zach. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Unfuck Your Mind. I'm your host, Zach Liotis. And in today's podcast, I have a returning guest, Ian Gray. Ian was in podcast number four. Go check out that episode. It's great. But today we have a new version of Ian, and I'm so excited. So this is Ian. This is his creed. And when I read this creed, it just brought so much energy into my body. And here we go. I am the usher. There is no other. I am here to bring forth the experience of heaven and earth. It has been written in stone. My presence alone attracts divine wealth, love, money, connection, and health. Tuned into a frequency from far beyond, my voice casts spells, no desire for a wand. My words have laser precision, truth from within, beyond religion. With silence I may speak, noise makes talk cheap, dwelling into the deepest of deep. Perspective from highest I preach. In service of all that is great, I commit myself to the ushering state. Whoo! Lord have mercy. Hello, Ian, and welcome back. Thank you. Thanks for having me on. It's so beautiful to hear other people read that the Usher's Creed. It's something that I, I read every single day until I could memorize it and go through it and really embody it. And it was something that kind of just channeled through to me in a, in a state of being. And yes. that's where creation ends up happening. And every time I read it, it just reminds me to show up as, as the highest possible vibration that I can. Well, just reading that alone, my body is vibrating. So if you guys are not feeling that vibrational ring within your body, rewind this and listen to that creed over again. Because holy, like I'm literally right now, there's like, I, there's everything's like zzz, going through my body. And this is what happened to me when I first read that creed. I was like, oh my God, let me see what episode Ian came from. So I went back to number four. I read your description there and I said, holy shit, man, this guy is like next level. And it hasn't even been six months. It's been in two months. Your frequency has changed to this. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Like that's the only Amen. way to describe it. <laughs> that's, that's how it feels inside of me. My whole, my whole life is, I, I've been experiencing this heaven and earth at deeper depths or more expansive depths, depending on the way that I'd like to describe it, um, over and over. And it just continues to expand and roll forward. And I found that the bigger that I go with like the next iteration of it, that the, the the more quickly things seem to change and I end up transforming and metamorphosizing in, into this new state of being, this new way of being to the point where it's like, I'm just in awe of each and every single day. The strange, strange coincidences. I used to call it, Oh, that's weird. Now I'm like, of course it's divine alignment. Like this is perfect. Yeah. Yeah. It's been amazing. Don't you love when it shows up because you think it may show up one way, but it, then it shows up in such a magical, mystical, I want to say hilarious way where you're just like, okay, universe, like, thank you for that. Thank you for actually presenting it to me that way. Like, and you just start laughing for no reason. Like. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's like that. You got me feeling, ah, you got me. Oh, it was so obvious staring me blank in the face this whole time. And I was completely blind to it. And now it's in and as i bring those these new ways of being into awareness more empowering way of being it it just seems to continuously expand so i love to share this with other others out there so that they can practice these tools because anyone can do it and i know there was a time when i was like stuck and even now in this moment there's places in my life that i'm like okay let's get some momentum going let's get some things churning and 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 i've been practicing that since the turn of the year here like really stepping into all this Mm -hmm. And in the, in the last three weeks alone, like just major transformations have happened for me as a result of being in this place. And it's like, I write down what I've done or what has happened over the last few weeks. And I'm like, how, like, how did, how was I ever busy before? Like when I look at this list, it's like all this stuff happened. Yeah. And yet 
I'm doing less. I'm actually doing less. <laughs> yeah, I get it. I totally get you. I know you. I know what you're talking about. The days that I thought I was doing a lot and I was exhausted, I wasn't doing anything compared to the days when I'm in the flow and in alignment and I'm just like ripping one thing off the list and the other and it's all falling into this the synchronicities that's the best way to say it. it's like synchronicities of everything and you're just like i'm not even tired and i've done so much more than i've ever done but i want to get back to your creed here because yeah. there's something that got my attention and and spirit keeps on pointing me there and this is the part that my body started shaking because i'm a true believer in this truth from within beyond religion with silence i may speak noise makes talk cheap like even me saying that again, my body is vibrating because I'm a true believer in that. Like what you say there, there's so much truth to it. Could you please go into that for those that maybe can't comprehend this type of language yet? Yeah, I think there's a couple different elements to it. And, and um, well, I mean, to kick off with the, the truth from within. And that mm -hmm. was kind of a a confusing idea because I was for a long time for me, cause I, I was very in my mind mm -hmm. and I thought I could figure things out by observing what was going on around me and putting pieces of puzzle together. And like now all of a sudden I could take control. And what ended up happening was as I started becoming more centered and started meditating and started slowing down the thoughts that were going through my head and like now just observing them and not being attached to them and, and not running down a path and like getting all that busyness or anxiety or worry that I might have in the past. My mind seemed to just start to clear. And when that happened, there, there was like this, this uh, other self Napoleon would, would maybe refer to it as Napoleon Hill um, or um, an inner self or inner, inner guidance. Cause I feel it come from like my heart center area. Mm -hmm. However, it's still like a, it's really flowing from something beyond just my brain. It's like the collective mind. And mm -hmm. it gives me like access to know my clear path and like, who am I being? Mm -hmm. How am I showing up in this moment? And what is the, the deepest truth, the highest truth that I can be in any situation? Mm -hmm. So by getting access to that, it's like I become now a vessel. This body is a body that I'm driving around in. I get to be in that observer state, which mm -hmm. is the God state. It's actually, I'm just watching things happen around me. And then it flows through within me and like to the smallest part. Like sometimes I'll do a meditation where I actually go into the smallest part that I can actually imagine inside of myself. So mm -hmm. a scientist might call this a quantum or quanta, something like that. And I, I look at it like even smaller than that. It goes infinite depth, like to nothingness. And when I get into that place of nothingness, that emptiness, all of a sudden like there's revelations that come through. Yeah. So that would be that, that first part. Thoughts before I go on to the next part? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's so many things that are coming to my head because I, when you're talking about that silence and going within, it's like your higher consciousness, your higher self, the collective, because the universe is truly inside of that. So I love that. Like your description of it is so perfect. And it's, we all have different language around it. And I love the way you said that, but I love the end when you're like, I go to that place of nothingness and all this stuff starts happening because when I'm traveling, when I just start wandering the streets, I'm looking for nothing but all my answers become revealed to me. What my spirit wants me to find always shows up. I've run into teachers, um, like just higher vibrational people that brought me messages. So that place of nothingness is like your greatest glory. Uh, absolutely. And, and this can be like uh, some, a teacher showing up. However, yes. uh, the way I believe it is, when the student is ready, the teacher will appear. And if, so long as I'm always ready to be a student, then every single thing is my teacher. So I get to a red light. And in the past, I might be like, oh, I keep getting these red lights and get frustrated mm -hmm. and be like, what's going on? And now I'm like, okay, what's the message from the red light? Well, mm -hmm. obviously slow down, mm -hmm. take a pause. And then in that moment at the red light, I might use that to do you know, a, a couple breaths to get myself back centered it can be the smallest thing. It could be what I read on my Instagram feed, or it could be just overhearing what a mother says to her child 
because anything that comes into my awareness is is actually a reflection on my psychological construct on, on yeah. me who i am so anytime i hear something see something that's a message for me and it's it's up to me like if i when i start judging it then i'm now falling out of the observer mode and i'm falling into this body in a dualistic state state of mind where there's good and bad and right and wrong and then i can get caught up in trauma so by standing in this observer state in this moment and always being ready to be the student to just be aware of what is happening around me and be able to see the divinity in it that's where like the greatness becomes revealed for me and then all of a sudden like it gives me insights in so many directions in my life Oof. amen to that totally totally okay, next line <laughs> next line i i, I want to get to this and i want to talk about the book that you wrote and it's great i want to talk about that so I want, that's why i want to get into this creed because that line from alone like Look at all the wisdom you got from truth from within beyond religion. Look at everything that you just brought forth just from literally what five words. And the number five is, is, um, Oh my God, what, the, what was my number five? It's like change. It's about new beginnings. It's about all that stuff. So it's interesting. Okay. Next line with silence. I may speak. Yeah. So, um, well, I think I didn't touch on the, the um, religion portion of it. Oh, and that was just from truth from within? Yes. Oh, my so, God, that was just three words. Holy shit. Thank God. So, so I'll, I'll make the, the religion. Um, we, we can button that up. It's just in, in the idea of religion, like there's so many great religions out there. There's so many great masters, people that are awakened individuals that these religions were started following their practices. And I think that in the... What, what's happened in the, my experience anyway, was that men interpreting what these scriptures said is actually polluting it. And, and actually by being tapped into the within, then I can see beyond those perversions, those mistakes, those mm -hmm. the, where the ego has gotten in there. So um, I'm all for religion. Mm -hmm. Just, I, I believe that each individual should interpret it on their own. And I think Jesus spoke about this. Like anybody that would like to talk about this can talk about this from yeah. their perspective and their experience. So I invite anyone to do that. And the more that they get tapped into the, the, the depths of within, the clearer the messages are and the more confident they may be in it. At least that's my, that's my experience. So that was yeah. short. No, and you know what? No, because we're going to go on this. Nothing's ever short between you and I, because this is next level conversation. So there's nothing short. If I have to bring you back for part two, I bring you back for part two, but there's nothing short between you and I. And I love that you said that because I remember I was in a meditation and I remember Jesus and King David came to me and they said, religion was your foundation getting to know who we truly were. Mm. Nonetheless, it was those that imprinted other beliefs within you that turn religion to the way it is. And those that are saying that they're spiritual beings and talking negative about religion still have a lot of awakening to do. So you better look at religion totally differently. And as I'm saying this, I got goosebumps over my body because this was a message that came to me four years ago to start speaking about those that speak negative about religion that call themselves all these spiritual awakening beings. You're not fully awakened because love comes in all areas. If someone's religious, then guess what? That's where they found their solstice. That's where they found their tribe. That's where they found their, 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 I want to say their, happiness within that suffering because everyone goes to find a certain religion or a tribe or whatever it may be in a certain area and if we're sitting there talking about negative of any religion then guess what we're not fully awakened because that's not love mm -hmm. so i'm so i'm so glad that you put that in there and, ex and, and explain this because this is only two words and i could make a whole podcast and just in those two words trust me <laughs> at the end of the day i'm not lying because when we look at this, religion is written, religious, religion is looked at in different variations, whether it's Orthodox, Catholic, Muslim, Hindu, whatever it may be. But at the end of the day, it's still portraying one message and it's love and it's awakening and it's supporting one another. It's just wrote, written differently. That's all it is. Yeah, I, I, absolutely. And, and what I, I, my experience was, that when I studied any of the religions from a religious teacher, and in most cases, there's some exceptions, it was God is like outside of you and you have to go through this church to, to actually mm -hmm. become closer to God. And Jesus consistently said, 
it's um, it's within heaven the kingdom of heaven is within you mm-hmm. like, i am the way i am not just jesus like i am every i everybody that can say i am like that that picture you have on your wall i am the way it is my choice it is my yeah. free will to awaken to my greatness and the moment that i say something is negative I start judging, then it's like I've eaten from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And what happens when that happens is I fall from grace. Mm -hmm. So why start making judgment? I start to create an illusion when I make the judgment. Now that doesn't mean that I don't go off and like play games and do little judgy things. My girl and I, we we do all that kind of stuff and like get to play human sometimes and make a chuckle out of it. Um, It's for me, it's actually more that identification with that judgment where like now it becomes part of who I am. And now I'm limiting myself. My belief is a limiter in what I am because it's just the one thing that I believe. Yeah, absolutely. Everything is in within us. And I remember this when I, again, when I did that channel, it's like, I already knew everything was within me. My mom is extremely religious. She's an elder at a church. Imagine I get told every Sunday I need to go to church to connect with God. I'm like, Ma, all I need to do is sit down, close my eyes, turn a candle on and call God. And guess what? He's there. I don't have to go anywhere. She's like, no. Nope. So I, I totally agree with what you say. And that is the, I am that I am. Mm-hmm. And when I had to go through that teaching, probably a good, it was probably about six years ago. And I watched the book of Moses. It's a, it's a movie. And, and I had to go through the whole teaching of I am that I am. Even when I saw dogs on the road, I had to say, I am that I am. Why? Because I am everything. I am the accent. I am the war. I am, I am everything. So, whoo, Lord have mercy. And, and then when I'm awakened to that idea, now I have the power of free will, choice, yeah. intention. And then I start putting intention into everything that I do. And I start to see the world completely differently. Amen. And I, to see i start to see love where i used to see war and hate now i I, now i can actually see where the the even in my especially my own personal experience you know there's been people that i've been at war with that i've now made peace with you know when i make peace with them it's because i made peace with myself in that construct so Mm -hmm. i'm only who i see is who i be so as soon as i start pointing the finger at somebody else for being wrong then i have like then it actually turn around and look at myself like they're my reflection and I am the projection. So Mm -hmm. it becomes like an evolutionary, like leap in the mind where I start taking a hundred percent responsibility of every single that comes to thing that comes into my awareness. So when I have a disrupt with my girl, then guess what happens? We both fight over who's taking responsibility for it. No, it's my fault. No, it's my fault. No, no, it's mine. Like, and then we're looking to see how we've created this thing instead of being like pointing the finger at each other, like boom, at ourselves. And then we race to see who can see the projection first. Yeah. And then it's like, oh my God. It's, it's, it's gamifying this whole entire experience versus the healing and the pain and the tears and the frustration. Yeah. No, it doesn't have to be that way. It really doesn't. Okay. With silence, I'm, are we done with that now? Those five I, I, I think for now. Okay, cool. I just had to make sure because for five words, we got a good 15 minutes in there. We could go a little longer. <laughs> okay, the next line. With silence, I may speak. Yeah, and, and I'll, I'll tie this in with the line after, which is um, words make talk cheap. Yeah, that's so. like a million dollar line right there. <laughs> <laughs> So I, I started to realize that the more, and this is so counterintuitive because we're on a podcast talking right now. So it's like, you sound like you're full of shit because you're on, you're actually talking and you're throwing this all out there. And, wow. the, and the, the truth is though, like I used to be the person in the room with the ideas and like lead the room in that way. And what I, I started doing was actually just holding in my heart intention. I would go into a, meetings with an intention in my heart mm-hmm. and rather than speaking, just hold it in my, my heart that would instigate others to start speaking mm-hmm. what my words were. And at first it was like, it, it wasn't working so well. So one of the things I started <laughs> doing was I would just ask like a couple of questions to kind of move the conversation in that, that direction and just be really intentional with what I said or what I asked. And then very quick, quickly, like the vibra- my vibration started raising 
with what I was projecting. So there's a, the way I look at it is around every single person, there's like this field of thought. It's like a cloud, the cloud of consciousness is what I call it. Mm -hmm. And it, it rolls around my head. And when I stand next to somebody else, then our fields mix. And that's why sometimes when I'm next to somebody, I might pick up their thoughts mm -hmm. and vice versa. Now with this place that we're holding in my heart intention, the heart goes out. I think it's like five miles, the frequency of the heart, something ridiculous. I think that you can even charge it to go like 500 miles, mm -hmm. the sphere of it. So when I start holding it in my heart, now people start speaking my words on my behalf, what I am feeling. And when I'm in that heart centered place, I'm talking about beautiful things. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden others are talking about it just because I'm holding it in my heart intention. So I can speak with silence from that radiation. And what I found was the more that I spoke, it made my words less impactful because the contrast wasn't there. So in the case where you and I ever in a debate, right? And we're in this, I'll shut up and I'll let you say everything and, and, and let some, whoever it is, speak, 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 speak. And they'll typically what happens is they'll get tired out. They'll just vent out a bunch of stuff and like bullets coming at me undirected, kind of just like a, 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 like a buckshot, just like go anywhere they can or like an Uzi, like rapid fire. Don't even care if they hit anything. Yeah. And then with a single line, I will say something so precise that it pierces the consciousness and completely disrupts and eradicates that behavior. And then all of a sudden they'll like break down in tears. I'll be like, <laughs> like uh, just start shaking and be like, what's going on here? Had I been like yelling back at them, then we just kind of neutralize each other and there was nothing really accomplished. We just both got tired. So yeah. words become really cheap the more that I speak them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that right there, ladies and gentlemen, is a million dollar wisdom. Trust me, because I know that when I was, I was always a person that had to get in the last word. Mm. I needed to get that last word in there. I fucking, I'm going to win this battle. Now I sit there with just, I'll get it out of you, man, because I'm about to say something to you. And as soon as I say it, you're, I'm going to break you down. So not small, but I'm going to break you down for you to realize that there's a better piece of you inside of there. And all of a sudden you just, you've activated and expanded. Yeah. Create that revelation. Um, yeah. And that's something I had a, a conversation with one of my clients today and I just wrote something and she was talking about money. And we're going to talk about money because I know you wrote this book, Heaven on Earth, and I'm sure money is in there because you say this, attracts divine wealth, love money, connection, and health. So we're going to talk about money right now, just in this talk is cheap thing. Um, one of my clients goes, I'm sick and tired of doing all this work and um, getting paid peanuts. She goes, I'm done with that. And I said to her, the only reason you're getting paid peanuts, because that's the only way you saw yourself. But now you see yourself in a bigger light. So you're asking for more divine compensation because now you see yourself for who you truly are. Yeah. Yeah, ab ab absolutely. Absolutely. And she took a deep, she, she texted me and she's like, I got to breathe through that, man. She goes, you just rock something inside of me. She goes, you made me think for a second. And I got to think about how much I'm going to charge for my services now because I'm no longer small. I'm not a peanut. Yeah. Beautiful. And I was like, woo. Amen, sister. <laughs> Amen. Right. And then, and then she went and raised her rates and got, got all of her, her, her payment. I imagine. Yeah. So she has slowly been raising her rates, but now we're working in this six figure lifestyle program that I'm at, that I'm running. And, and she's like, I'm ready for my six figures. And I said, beyond that, but well, we're going to yeah. make the six figures first, because once you get to that six figures, I said to her, everything else starts activating inside of you because now you're like, Oh my God, I did this. I could do this. It's, this is easy. Now I know what all this work was that I had to do previously to bring me into like this next trajectory of wealth. Right. So it's really cool. Okay. Is there anything else that we want to put on that with silence? I may speak noise makes start talk to you. I, I think I might just, I'm getting the, the, the vibe just to tune in to like anybody out there. Just, just that here's this just next time some kind of conflict comes up rather than even being right. Like nobody wins an argument mm -hmm. so rather than being right about anything, just stop 
and sit back and observe the conversation and observe what the other, other person's coming at you with and take a mental note of how you may be doing the same thing. That's what I like to do when somebody's coming at me. So then the whole time somebody's unleashing on me that I'm like clearing my bullshit so that I can actually get into a spot where my response is like, okay, I just figured out exactly how I cleared that this even came into my field, like where I was practicing being jealous or annoyed or impatient or whatever it may be. Oh, okay. And then the response, when I, when I bring it, the, the really fun way to do it is to talk about myself. So if you notice, most of the time when I talk, I, I speak in first person, my experience at my level, current level of awareness. These, I stay in the, the first person because when I'm talking about my experience, I'm not projecting anything onto anyone else. Mm -hmm. So if somebody's really frustrated and they're just unleashing it, then I might just drop back and be like, you know, I, I know that when I'm frustra frustrated, then I make disasters happen I'm in a vibration where that happens for me. Yeah. And rather than engaging and being frustrated with you right now, I'm just going to hear you. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden, like it kind of just flips the switch. They're not prepared for it. And when that happens, they'll automatically be like, oh, let me see. Am I frustrated? Am mm -hmm. I being this? And then they start to catch themselves and it shifts the vibe. So yeah. that silence is actually creating like a space for them to like unleash their energy. And then with the, whatever I say back to it, when I speak in that first person, my experience about me, then it opens up their ability to be vulnerable too. Cause now I just was vulnerable in the first move. So it does it probably a dozen different things there, but I'll leave it at that. But you're bringing up like a domino effect of so many other things that could just take place from just that scenario alone. When you, when we become the observers of life. And I remember I had a spiritual teacher and I went to him a couple of times. I was called, he's a soul brother. They said, go get a healing from him. And I was like, okay. So I went for like a good four or five healings. And one day I called him and I said, Mark, I'm going through some really messed up shit. Like, and you put me in a transient state. And I mean, I know how to get into a transient state, but sometimes we need someone else to guide us through this process. Right. And all of a sudden he's like, okay, so I'm putting you into space. So it puts me into space. I'm like, Oh, look at that. He goes, why are you looking at things? He goes, just be the observer and stop being the person in the story. Mm -hmm. And I was like, Oh, that's a good way of looking at it. So here I am for a solid, I would say now 30 minutes that he put me through this and I'm observing everything as I'm observing it. I'm totally healing from it because I'm like, Oh, I don't like what I saw there. Hmm. Well, I, that needs to shift. That needs to change. So I love that you say that when we observe everything that's going on and we create with, from the eye, as you said, in that third person, because we really are mind, body, soul, really, if you think of it, right? It's, there's, there's a third person there. It's a higher connectivity to be that, I always say, be that star in the sky that just stays there and observes all the other stars around them, right? And that's exactly the way I call that. And it's just, it becomes such a revelation, not only for me, but for everyone else around too. But for me, especially, because now I'm activating to a higher level and higher level and higher level. And it always, it always starts with me, just like it starts with you to see where the friction is. And then from there, we could dissolve anything so much easier. It's like, it's like you take a deep breath and it's dissolved. It's just gone. Yes. That, that's a, a key component to this observer thing is I should call it the observer thing. Yeah. Um, <laughs> It really is a observer. Way of being is I'm not my body. I'm not my thoughts. I'm not my emotions. Yeah. And, and, and when I get into this spot, like then I'm no longer identified or attached to anything. Mm -hmm. So all of a sudden this art of detachment becomes so much easier. Like, oh, the past is just the past. The thing happened. Mm -hmm. And it was, it was during the time when it was happening, when I was identified with myself, it felt shitty. But now looking back at it, like I'm, it's past, it's done. And thinking about it more is only going to bring it into my future. So why would I make it in my present right now by thinking about it and like delving into it and like tearing myself up? Now there might be times when I'd like to go in and like investigate a deeper meaning and learning, but I'm still doing that from an observer state. So there's no mm -hmm. judging. 
the moment that I give myself any kind of guilt or shame for making a mistake, we'll call it, or an error in judgment or lapse in reasoning and discernment, then it's a reminder for me to forgive myself. The mm -hmm. moment I feel guilty, it's just a reminder for me to say, oh, ah, forgive yourself. And when I do that with myself, I can do it with everyone else. And then all of a sudden, peace on earth, heaven on earth, bam, voila. Yeah. And it, it's a ripple effect. I think you mentioned Ooh. this domino term. And, and I like that. Um, I experience it more as like a ripple coming out, mm -hmm. stone dropping in the water. Like every single thought that I have ripples out everything that I, I carry within me. And then when I speak it into existence, my mouth is my money maker. Mm -hmm. right? so when you talk about money, it, my mouth creates everything. So my thoughts start getting in Berlin and I start speaking it into existence, writing in existence is another act of manifestation where it goes from the spiritual plane to the physical plane. So speaking it becomes a vibration sound wave and writing it actually becomes a physical thing that I can now read. And then action is another way to solidify a manifestation. Woo! Can I get an amen? Amen. Serious. In Texas. <laughs> amen. All kinds of amens out here now. <laughs> there is a lot of amen in Texas. Yeah. Okay, so Spirit wants me to continue near the end of this creed. So, dwelling into the deepest of deep. That just opened up my heart right there. Dwelling mm. into the deepest of deep. My heart is just exploding right now. If I say it one more time, I'm going to start dancing. So, go ahead. <laughs> Well, I, I, I think what really comes up for me with that piece is like my willingness to dive as deep into my, my darkness that exists. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's really fun to go out into the light and, and speak of all the things that are expressions of my greatness in this beauty as the way that I learned it through whatever social conditioning, we'll call it that. Yeah. Um, there's another level of awareness, but it would take a lot to explain. So we'll, let's call it that. Social right condition. We'll keep it at that. Yeah. <laughs> However, when I go into my, like my, my deepest to delve into my deepest of deep, my deepest thoughts, my deepest emotions, the things that I normally would stay away from because it feels bad. Mm -hmm. When I delve into that place, I get to mine gold. Mm -hmm. There's yeah. so much learning in that area. So like, mm -hmm. It's like diving into hell to bring back gold to back to heaven. Cause I'm on the other side of heaven is, oh, I'm sorry. On the other side of hell is always heaven. Like I may have to go through hell sometimes to get to heaven. So diving into that darkness, it's like a cleansing. It's um, like the idea of sin and confession. Mm -hmm. Like every, what, what are the sins that I'm making? Any toxicity. So toxin. Yeah. Toxin is sin. Yeah, absolutely. So, so when I'm confessing my, 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 my sins or my yeah. toxins, then it starts to be able to reveal and release some of the, the darkness of what I've been hiding. So mm -hmm. when, I, when I do that within, it's like no holes barred. And it just allows me to get really in touch with anything that's been allowing me to carry more weight. Yeah. And once mm -hmm. I let go of that bag, that, that heaviness, boom, I can go, yeah. I can go farther out. Yeah. And that's why I always say depression was my greatest teacher. Cause in that mm -hmm. darkness, I saw so much light and depression depressed, like to press down, down. like delving in press yeah. down. Like it's literally yeah. in the word and it's yeah. not a bad thing. Depression no. is a beautiful thing. Yeah. It's it makes me more thing. powerful every time I went into it. And listen, depression isn't my first or second rodeo. I just divorced it about two and a half years ago. And I'm telling you, I, I almost hit depression, I think maybe last summer, I think, I don't even know, just for like a, a, a one hour thing until my ego. So what you're saying there is I have a conversation with my ego. That's the sin, mm. right? So my ego is the sin because my spirit doesn't know sin and knows only, it only knows light, right? Yeah, so yeah. when I had that one hour state of depression in my mind this summer, and it's like my ego said to me, you know, this feeling that's coming up, you already had like a divorce with it. What are you getting remarried now? So you have a choice. Either you could lay in bed and re be remorseful for yourself and cry and play the victim, or you get your ass up and go enjoy your, your day. And I was just like, 
oh snap thank you ego because my ego told me this because i'm friends with my ego which is i'm friends with depression i'm friends with anxiety i don't see anything wrong with having anger if i want to scream i'm going to scream if i'm pissed off i'm pissed off and if you take it differently then you know what you got to check yourself because we have to recognize these emotions in order to heal from them so that happened to me i think it was this summer yeah. Oh yeah. This summer and last summer, it seems like every year they may give me like a one hour depressive state. So I can be reminded of what it feels like, but it's true when you dive into that or dwelling into the deepest of deep, it's true. You find the, the brightest light there and, and it just makes you who you are every day, that much stronger, that much confident. So I love, I love that line. I love this creed. I'm going to actually put this on my wall. And, and <laughs> I, 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 you are an usher, whether you, spoke it into existence or not like you are here to bring forth heaven on earth so Absolutely. adopt it make it yours anybody listening if this is your calling is to bring heaven into earth onto earth take this creed make it your own own it like yeah. it's on the evolve life website somewhere it's on my it's Facebook on the show profile. notes just below show here notes. too so i'm going to be in the show notes just below here so guys we're going to go into, we have three more lines before we talk about your book, Heaven on Earth, okay? <laughs> Perspective from highest I preach. I love that. Mm. It's like, that's like music to my soul. That's like food for my soul right there. Perspective from highest I preach. And, and that really is parallel to what you spoke earlier, I think, which is like being the star that's observing all the other stars, like being mm. at, in this observer mode so that I can be at a higher perspective, like the rich live in the penthouse. Mm -hmm. The man in the high castle is the one that's running everything. The mm -hmm. all seen eye has a higher perspective. So mm -hmm. um, everything's quantum, so there's really no linearness yeah. to this. However, in this 3D world, higher means greater or more yeah. expanded. And like, so if you were to go on top of a mountain, you can see farther. When I go on top of a mountain, I can see much farther. I get a much bigger, broader perspective. Not as much detail, but the broader, in that broader perspective, there's a new level of awareness. Mm -hmm. And that's like beautiful. Like I did a, uh, a skydive at high altitude. My first time ever skydive, only skydive, actually. <laughs> uh, <laughs> okay, I'll do it again, but it was a high altitude. I'm going and I could see the curvature of the earth in this new perspective. And it gave me a whole new um understanding of of like the nature of this this 3d world and it was just mm -hmm. it was magical sorry flat earthers yeah no you know what it's funny to say every time i travel there's an always a new perspective that's coming over me because we're traveling over the clouds mm -hmm. so we see everything clear mm -hmm. right and yeah i just got home yesterday from nicaragua and literally i was in a transient state like my i'm leaning on my elbows my head just on my arms on my hands and i'm just looking out and i'm just like in awe with things that are coming down to me right like just this wisdom that's streaming through me and i'm just like in awe because the skyline or whatever you want to call it at that point was just beautiful and the and the flight attendant's like excuse me ma'am could you put your table tray up i didn't even hear him because i'm in a different state and the lady beside me had to hit me and say, he wants you. <laughs> but it's when we look at it from above the clouds and see this, this infinite abundance, this infinite blessing, this infinite offering that the universe is giving us, and we change our perception within ourselves. Huh. It's, this is years of teaching. You're literally five lines, six lines here is bringing me back to when I <laughs> really started tapping into this. So that's Lord, beautiful. Man, and, and it, what I like to even think is like, so when I look out into this night sky, that's the heavens. However, yeah. if I was out in the heavens, I'd be looking back and I'd see earth and think the earth was in the heavens. Mm -hmm. This is all the heavens. Like it's all the it's heavens. All yeah, yeah. It's just a matter of like getting that level of awareness, that state of awareness that I can now realize, okay, heaven on earth is here. And the only one that's missing it is me. Yeah. Yeah. It's my illusion that's missing it. So, um, go ahead. Yeah. No, it's true. Listen, I used to always say God 
I'm never going to come back to earth because I want to be in heaven. And that's, remember I told you, this is the first podcast. Go to podcast episode number four to hear our first discussion. This is next level for, for us right now. And for anyone out there listening to this, this is totally awakened men, like next level. This is like 201, if you want to call it, like whatever you want to call it, but it's true. It's, it's when we recognize that heaven is on earth now, we start to look at life differently because I used to always say, this is hell here. And spirit says to me, no, you're just bringing hell on earth. You can make it into heaven. And that's when everything became to me, heaven on earth, heaven on earth, heaven on earth. I had to change my own perception because I was going through depression. I was going through losing everything. I, 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 my family left me, my friends left me. I was by myself. So that's why I found hell in that place. But when I recognized, you know what? It's true. Heaven is here because if heaven wasn't here, I wouldn't be receiving this guidance right now. And this is heavenly. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, it's kind of like a state of mind. I, I did the hell on earth thing for a long time. And sometimes I'll look and see people still doing that way of life. I'm like, man, they're still living hell on earth. And then I'm like, oh, that means I am too. My yeah. ripple hasn't gotten out there yet. So then it allows me to investigate where that is. And, and it's been clearing and clearing and clearing and clearing and getting more and more divine every single day, pretty much. I know sometimes I have an off day or an off moment. Um, but from my practices and the rituals that I do and, and this clarity, like, it keeps me on point so that those, those moments are fewer and fewer and farther between each other. Yeah. Oof. Preach, man. Preach. Seriously. That is the highest I preach. Damn right. That is the highest ever. In service of all that is great, I commit myself to the ushering state. Like you could only say that in two lines. In service of all that is great, I commit myself to the ushering state. Yeah. So this is, this is a really um, interesting one because I always talk about this duality thing. Like, okay, that's going to get me into the drama. There's no good or bad. And people are like, well, you use this word great all the time. And the way I look at it is that great is actually a synonym to God or divinity. All mm -hmm. is divine. All is greatness. All is God. Every single thing that's in my awareness and beyond my awareness is a manifestation. So I'll use the word great um, to really more make it tangible in the 3D instead of just divinity, divinity, divinity. At the end of the day, though, when I say greatness, or it's the same as godliness mm -hmm. or divinity. Yeah. Um, and, and everything, I believe, is in an act of service. So through service, that's, that's my giving. My giving is an expression of life coming and expanding itself. So like a flower blooming into its beauty is a gift. The sun sending heat and light our way is a gift. It's an expression of life mm -hmm. giving. It's an expression mm -hmm. of service. It's an act of service. Mm -hmm. So I look at my, my fragmented consciousness when I'm in this body and I'm, I'm in the duality of it. And then when I go into the, the higher levels of awareness and I can start actually express and give more life and the life force that runs through me gets larger and larger and larger and that's how i become larger than life mm -hmm. that's how i continuously raise my vibe and keep myself expanding is to be expression of a gift or through service of divinity of the greater life force that runs through me yeah. so that's that's on that first line <laughs> And, and, and then as far as committing myself to the ushering state, mm -hmm. so usher, mm -hmm. usher was an interesting word that came to me because mm -hmm. it's, it's actually, there's no, this is not a reality of creating heaven on earth. I'm creating my awareness of heaven on earth. I'm yeah. seeing through the illusion. And I was looking for a, 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 a searching for a word that, that didn't have a bunch of connotations to it. Mm -hmm. And to like usher is to like to deliver one to their seats to show like, mm -hmm. Oh, where's your ticket? You're coming to heaven on earth. Where's, let me see your ticket. Oh, here's your ticket. You're ready to pay the price of admission, which means giving up the hell. 
Yeah. Okay, yeah. let me show you to, to your seat. <laughs> I love the hell with this. Let's do it. <laughs> to hell with it. Yes, to hell with this. I love it. What a great saying. So, so the, the ushering became the, 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 the verb that creates the, the, the perceived action that dissolves yeah. the illusion um, that would limit my awareness or um, allow me to have the choice and the intention to actually create heaven on earth. And by committing to this, this state, when, I, when, when this came through me, like, in all honesty, like, there was, there was a lot of parts of me that were like, how am I going to read this to anybody? Like, this is like people, what are people going to think of me when I share this? They're going to be, what do you think, you're Jesus Christ? Damn right no. you are. I am the Messiah. I, I am the Messiah. <laughs> you better believe it. You are the Messiah. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm another expression of divinity. Yeah. And I, I, I've been constantly awakening to a higher level of consciousness. And I'm, I'm finding um, ways to bring in the higher light quotient into this physical body. And I'll be able to raise my vibration and be tuned to my, my mind, my, my, uh, my emotions, my energetic body, and like my chakras and all of those pieces. And the thing is, it's infinitely expanding. So mm -hmm. to claim anything like that I've got to figure it figured out, then, then I, I'm regressing. I'm like slowing down. So there's constantly this expression. And mm -hmm. the beautiful thing is as I commit to this state and way of being, who am I being? Who am I? Who am I being in this moment? Then it returns me to a, an unaltered state. So the, the, all the, the social conditioning, as we called it earlier, starts yeah. to just fall away. That's just, that's just perceived illusion that I created Mm -hmm. When I came in and incarnated into this body in a limited fragment of consciousness, because I got identified with the mind. Yeah. So, and that's all an illusion anyway, because time doesn't exist, but that's another <laughs> podcast. <Yeah. laughs> we should have a series because you and I could go on forever. Uh, I'm but down. You know, the funny thing is, is that we're driving to New York, my sister and I, and I hear close your eyes and I close my eyes and out of my mouth comes, I am the Messiah. And my sister goes, you're a retard. That's what you are. And I'm like, I am the Messiah. I look at her and she goes, are you okay, dude? What's wrong with you? And I just kept on saying, I am the Messiah. I am the Messiah. And here we are in New York. I'm walking through New York and I'm getting this crazy channel coming through me. And she looks at me, I'm like, she goes, are you still the Messiah? And I said, yeah, I am. And so are you. Because we are everything. I could, I, one minute I could be the Messiah. I could be Buddha. I could be Krishna. I could be whoever I want to be right? Because I am that I am. I am everything. So that's why I say you are the Messiah. We tap into that energy. That's inside of us. Uh, I, I, I love what you're, 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 how you're putting that. And, and from that level of awareness, yes, as all and everything um, yeah. that, that, uh, that I am everything and, and nothing all at the same time. Yeah, exactly. Um, <laughs> And so is anyone listening to this and exactly. that, 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 that state of awareness, who am I being like my, my choice is I'm not going to, I'm not an imitator. Like I, I, I will look at what Jesus is teaching or Buddha's mm -hmm. teaching and I'm not going to take what resonates with me and, and harmonize with my vibration. And I get to have my own unique experience and expression mm -hmm. of that. And that may be the Christ consciousness mm -hmm. um, that sometimes I get to play in and then other times I get to be human. Exactly. And you always have to remember to be human because I get lost in that, mm -hmm. that other world up there. And man, that's where I just screwed up a lot when I didn't become human. And I remember Mother Mary calling me to the earth for years. I'm like, no, no, no. Earth is messed up, man. I want to be here. <laughs> and so when I came in for the landing, it's like now everything you learned for the last three years being in space bring it back on earth, ground yourself and start teaching people this. And this is, this is exactly why we have to ground ourselves is to teach. Okay. Now that we got half of this beautiful creed that I'm going to actually write and put on my wall, let's talk about this book, heaven on earth. I have to get my copy. I've been traveling. You sent me the link and I have to get my book because just alone our conversation right now has been so elevating next level thinking everything i can't imagine what's in this book so talk to me about this book so heaven on earth and i don't know if you're going to show the video here but there's a cover very bible-esque golden black um mm -hmm. was a book that was actually channeled to me 
after being in Costa Rica in the jungles embedded for over 20 days, just practicing, getting centered, becoming one with, with all that is. Mm -hmm. And I came back home and just basically started writing. And I wasn't really even sure what was going to pour out. And then Emily, my partner, she is an amazing translator that made these words that I channeled through into a palatable format that anybody could understand at any level of awareness and put it, help me put it into a practical way of being so that consistently I'm creating what it is that I desire most. And um, it's, a, it's an amazing tool so that I actually manifest more quickly than ever and I manifest it that I really desire. So it's, it's um, 100 or 200, 199 pages. However, over half of it is actually the, the daily ritual that's done to make sure that I'm in the vibrational alignment. So essentially the ritual tunes me like a guitar before I play a guitar. I could be an amazing guitar player, but it's not tuned. It's not going to sound very well. So the, the ritual is, is this ritual that was channeled to me um, and then polished with, with Emily's high level awareness um, so that one can take themselves from any state energetically. I can be sleepy and move into like a really grounded, present, energetic state. I could have emotions of anxiety running through me and move that to divine love. I could have my mind running like just busy, busy, busy and then bring it to calm. I can connect to spirit more deeply. So that's the first section of the ritual. It helps get me into that place and then allows me to set myself up to create a, who am I being today? And what about me is going to support that? What are my core values? What are emotions? What power is going to allow me to get to that place? From there, limiting be or disempowering beliefs may show up that I can then rewrite, which is another part of the ritual. Um, then what am I going to, create today in, impactfully like it, it shows up what is actually going to make a dent in what i'm creating in the next section and then the following section is what gifts of mine what gifts do i have that's going to allow that to come in so that when i'm in action which may just be speaking it may even be thinking it may actually be lifting heavy things it could be all kinds of things that they're the most impactful in actions now what happens is this ritual gets married to what's done before that, which is creating declarations, like the Declaration of Independence created sovereignty of the United States of America. It was at the moment where men signed that, we became the United States of America, Declaration of Marriage, another Declaration of War. The moment that something's declared, it comes into the now. Mm -hmm. So getting really clear in my intention, creating my declaration here in the now is, is the first component that actually, um, that I do. And that I do that in my lifestyle. I do that in my finances, my spiritual, my relationships and my health. Mm. And no joke, like by writing down a year, well, about a year and a half ago now, it took about a year to come into fruition. I like wrote down like six pack abs. Boom. They showed up. Like yeah. I didn't change a whole lot. And all of a sudden they showed up, but by having it in my awareness, creating this declaration, it changed me. I had, pictures of me doing handstands and I forgot about it. Also I'm doing handstands uh, building a temple in Costa Rica. Guess what? It looks just like the, the home that I had put in my declarations previously um, a year earlier. And it like looks almost identical. So all these things just line up by having this clear declaration. I bring it into the now much more quickly than it would have otherwise. And then the next section is creating an adventure. Like how does it feel as this stuff comes into reality? So it, it spawns the power of emotion to start bringing it into the now. Mm. Once I have those clear, then the ritual like aligns and points me in that direction. So it's almost like a compass, the ritual. And then the fourth element of it is, is the expansion where mm. anybody that buys this book right now, I'm going to give them a, a month access free to a group that we have of people that are practicing this and we share it. And once I share something, it's been witnessed. And now it actually speeds up the creation, like the declaration of independence. If nobody witnessed it, it wouldn't have been a declaration of independence. Yeah. If nobody witnesses a declaration of marriage. It's not a marriage. So yeah. by having this forum, forum forum for people to be able to share this information, it already starts becoming real. And what's interesting is I've already had a few cases where somebody's like, 
I'm looking to get a new car and they describe their car. And then all of a sudden, um, one of somebody else that heard it finds the car for them at a deal that they could have never found it before. Yeah. And now the minds of others start working on creating what it is that I desire to create. And then they work together and then they start expanding. Oh, I didn't even think that was possible. I'm adding that one to mine. So yeah. it's been ever expanding, like ripple out into the universe of everybody that's practicing. Now. Like I'm just, I could talk about this for like months. Well, I do talk about it every single week. So well, can we talk about it? Cause let's do some podcast. Let's do some more stuff on this. Once I get this book and cause you know what the funny thing is you beat me to this. I got that same message to write that book. I think like six months ago. I made so many declarations in the last six months and I'm actually, they're all coming to fruition right now. Not everything, but one by one, they're all starting to show up. So kudos to you, man, you beat me to the book. Just like (laughs) a lot of people be beat me to books, but no, seriously, I love this because tell everyone what the outcome is going to be. I know what the outcome is going to be, but I want you as the author of this book, as a channel of this book, to tell everyone the outcome of doing these exercises every day. And not just about being in the group. That's just, that's just like the cherry on top of your Sunday, but just doing the work, what it's going to bring them. Yeah. And I, I might not even say it's work. If it becomes work, then I wrote the wrong freaking declarations. Like I should be so freaking excited about what my declarations are that it's like, Oh, yeah. this is fun. It's just actually reallocating the time from the busyness. Mm-hmm. And what happens is, is I create my heaven on earth. Mm-hmm. So the funny thing about not having time and time being an illusion is that there's an infinite number of alternate realities all happening in this now. Mm-hmm. That's, the, that's the only way that I can, my understanding of it is. So I can be supported or I can support another in creating whatever their heaven and earth is. It can be totally different than mine because mm-hmm. they're going to experience it in their reality. So once this starts being practiced, and people are tapped into their intuition, their higher selves, they stop thinking that they have to step on somebody to get something. Mm -hmm. They start to realize they have everything within them. And Mm -hmm. once that happens, it's like, oh, everything I create is actually out of love. It's out of kindness. It's out of compassion. It's out of joy. If I think that healing needs to be done, then then guess what? I'm playing savior role and I'm actually creating more pain by believing Mm -hmm. that healing needs to be done. No, Mm -hmm. this is like, who I am. This is what I choose. I'm very clear on it. This is who I am now in this moment. Yeah. And I start with the end in mind. So like, okay, what does it look like five years? And then I write it now in the now. And then also it just starts happening. Domino effect, ripple effect, whatever. My whole reality changes. Yeah. So anything, anything, anything that you desire, anything that I desire can be reality. The only Mm -hmm. thing that limits me is my ability to imagine things and my ability to believe and have that faith in it. So Mm -hmm. this is a toolkit to like get me really clear on what it is that I desire and Mm -hmm. then continuously raise my level of belief Mm -hmm. and then keep myself in a high vibration. So it manifests extremely quickly, like to the point where like I told Emily, I'm like, you know, these roofers finally stopped banging on the the ceiling because I've been New roof being yesterday, a uh, new roof being put on my, my house, really loud, like lots of hammers, dunk, 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 all day. It finally stops. I'm like, wow, I actually kind of miss it. I thought they were all packed up and done. All of a sudden I hear, dunk, 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 dunk. <laughs> I'm like, that was weird. I'm like, well, may- maybe, maybe it was a little much. And then all of a sudden they stopped. And I was like, was that really me? And I started having a little bit of doubt about it. And then all of a sudden I hear, dunk, dunk. And I was like, no, it was me. And then they stopped again. I was like, <laughs> What is going on? Yeah. And this happens in so many scenarios. I do in the roof, for example, because it's, it's tiny, but there's like ending lawsuits, ending relationships, starting relationships, changing relationships. Like lawsuit goes from where I'm at war with somebody to now all of a sudden we are on the same page and like creating together. It turns out the guy I was at war with writes poetry about heaven on earth. I'm like, what the oh, hell? This is a whole new uh, perspective on this situation. Yeah. I like our brothers and I was treating him in a different way. My fault, my bad, my mistake. I apologize. Let me offer you something for peace. Yeah. So that's the book. It will change your life. Practice it. Get it now. It's on Amazon. It's 
freaking amazing. We're gonna have the link below. So link is in the show notes below for you to get this book. Like I said, I'm excited for this book and I'd be so happy to, as I'm working on it, to do series with you, to talk about it on the podcast. We could have a special whatever yeah. with it because I love the work that you do. So in alignment with everything that I do, we just use a different languaging around it. I have a lot more F-bombs and divines in there. <laughs> so, <laughs> it's just about really keeping it real and raw and very transparent. And you know what? We had to go through our hell to recognize our heaven on earth. Really? What the fuck? I can drop all kinds of F-bombs. Come on. <laughs> I'm from New York. I know you can. <laughs> <laughs> I know you can, but that's cool because we don't have to because it's like, this is Jesus time, you know what I mean? And Jesus doesn't like that. And that's what I just got. Like, all I just heard, because I have a picture of Jesus right beside me, and I heard, this is Jesus time. We don't do that. <laughs> F-bombs are a great disruptor. It snaps yes. people too. It's got a great vibration. Curse that- words, want to talk curse words? Let's talk about impossible or can't oh. or yeah. not or <gasps> should yeah, could. or have to or must. Those yeah. Those are some curse words right there. <laughs> yeah, you know what? It's true. They are. You're cursing your spirit with those words because you're doubting, like doubt. Ah! Creating you know? away my free will, creating doubt, creating yeah, creating illusion. Yeah. All we, that stuff. We'll do a co- we'll do a podcast on on words. We, yeah, we could do a thousand podcasts. You and I have. This is like you're like my brother from a different you know dimension and era. I know what you are. <laughs> so old <laughs> brother. You're a soul brother. But let me read your creed before I let you go, okay? Because I need to read this one more time. Um, Everyone, I just want you to close your eyes right now. I want you to really get in tune with your heart because this is really what this is all about, okay? Really get in tune with your heart and feel this on a deeper level. These words are vibrating. They're there to uplift you, to rise you to the next level. And to get a hold of Ian, all of his contacts, his socials are just in the show notes below. To buy the book is in the show notes below. And the creed is also going to be there. But I just really want you to close your eyes right now, take nice deep breaths, and connect to your heart. I am the usher. There is no other. I am here to bring forth the experience of heaven and earth. It has been written in stone. My presence alone attracts divine wealth, love, money, connection, and health. Tuned into a frequency from far beyond, my voice casts spells, no desire for a wand. My words have laser precision, truth from within beyond religion. With silence I may speak, noise makes talk cheap. Dwelling into the deepest of deep, perspective from highest I preach. In service of all that is great, I commit myself to the ushering state. Take a few nice deep breaths there and just feel those words. Get into your cells, into your bones, into your blood, into your organs, and really connect with these words that Ian has channeled through for all of us to step in that sense of higher consciousness, higher self, the higher universe, whatever you want to call it, God, grace, light, whatever it is. Really tap into that. These words are not gold. They are platinum. They are more than you could put into emotion. They are more than you could put into words. Just feel the words. Feel every part of you. The book link is down below. Cop your copy if you want to activate and change your life. I know this man's book can do this for you because I could feel his vibration. I got the same channel in writing something like this but I'm so happy that someone else has done it and I'm on to the next project. So Ian, thank you so much for being on Unfuck Your Mind, Awaken Men Monday. You have truly brought so much light, so much joy, so much wisdom, so much of the true essence of who you are in your divine birthright to us today. So thank you. And I hope to do this once again. Absolutely. Thank you for having me on. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm really excited. We'll, we'll be talking more. I, and let me know as soon as you get the book, I'll add you to that, that group and uh, we'll get, get you rolling in, in that piece too. Yeah. So thanks again for being on everybody. Thanks for listening. Um, more great stuff to come. Yes. All right. Thank you everyone. And don't forget, comp your book, get on all of Ian's socials, Show him a picture that you got the book and he's going to add you into this group so that everything that you have declared to bring into this world gets activated by a group of human beings that are all at a higher vibrational frequency. Vibe with your tribe and show up alive. (laughs) That was a good one. Until next time, have a good day. Bye for now. 
Thank you for listening to Unfuck Your Mind. Head over to iTunes and leave your five-star review and comment to get uprising the charts so we can get this incredible wisdom into more airs worldwide. In the show notes, you'll find all the affiliate links to what we've mentioned in the podcast or products Zach loves to use. Until we connect again, unfuck 1% of your thoughts and watch how your life shifts.